members and uh, uh, chair of the jury for this uh, special award. Uh, sponsors, uh, I had written McLean, L'Actualité, and Historica Canada, and there's a ton of others, so all of you, uh, many present here tonight, parliamentarians and guests. Permettez-moi, en français, de d'abord dédier cet uh, honneur qui m'échoit et, uh, et cette uh, cérémonie uh, en l'honneur de Valérie Plante, la nouvelle première mairesse de Montréal. I was really taken by surprise by the offer of the award. My spontaneous reaction was that it was a mistake on the person. In French, we say une erreur sur la personne, a mistaken identity. But this being said, my thanks for this wonderful honor. I'm particularly touched. Um, I, it was suggested I could speak, I would speak on women um, and or on healthcare. I'll speak of women tonight. No man can leave the room, by the way. <laughs> uh, I want to say a word on women in political power to start. Because with all the sunny days excitement of two years ago, almost to the day, um, with the first federal gender parity cabinet, the temptation was to conclude, we've made it. Oh no, we haven't. When I was first elected to the House of Commons, we, the five women, and Flora MacDonald was one of them, in 1972, we were 1.8% 1 of the 264 MPs at the time. This percentage reached 20% in uh, 1997, 20 years ago. My shock when checking today's figures um, is that women still make only 26.3% of this House membership, ranking us, Canada, to the 64th spot out of the 188 country analyzed uh, by the uh, Interparliamentary Union. Empirical research uh, by Scandinavian feminists uh, tell us that only when there is a critical mass of 30 to 33 percent of parliamentarians, as are only when 30, 33 percent of parliamentarians are women, do things chart, start changing the reactions to women in politics, their performance and efficiency the political culture, norms and social conventions, the political discourse, the political agenda starting to include issues of interest to women, and so on. To conclude, we still have a long way to go, the objective being around 50% of women MPs in the House of Commons. Now, let's now look at women without power, an entirely different story. The Globe's Elizabeth Renzetti recently entitled her column, Systemic Abuses of Male Power Are Everywhere. We all know something is wrong for the longest of time and that it has to do with male power. But where do we start with this infamous list of Harvey Weinstein, the RCMP, Amazon's Roy Price, Bill O'Reilly, Kevin Spacey, the Paris and Oxford University rock star of Islamism, Tariq Ramadan, uh, the Canadian Armed Forces, Bill Cosby, the Montreal chef and TV uh, personality, uh, Giovanni Apollo. Where do we start? Where do we go with all of that? I admire and want to say it tonight and thank the woman who suddenly and massively came out through the hashtag MeToo, who celui de Merci. Ou celui, celui des Françaises, euh, moi aussi. Euh, non, celui des Françaises. Alors celui-là, il n'est pas piqué des verres quand on connaît bien l'argot parisien. Balance ton port. Les Québécoises, moi aussi. Les Espagnols, yo también. Et où les Italiennes, quelle la volta que. On a lighter note. 
I admit that my English vocabulary has been enriched these last months, starting with Trump's pussy grabbing. Not in my Robert and Collins dictionary, which has lots of pussy this and pussy that, like pu pussy footing, but not Trump's one. Stalking, stalking. I had, I had, stalking. I had heard the word before and still have today a vague idea of what it means and that it could become very scary. Groping is my last one. But after reading its translation into French on the web, I hadn't a clue what it meant. That word I knew from unwanted experience way back as a new MP. I won't say more today. As a former academic, I also recently acquired new concepts. Toxic masculinity or dominant masculinity, which the Globe's Denise Balkilson, I don't know how to pronounce her name in English, Balkilson, Balkilson, defines, quoting its author, a US university uh, professor, and, and I quote, a form of alpha manhood that demands men extract submission from women, be emotionally removed but hypersexual and in control everywhere they go. The title of her piece uh, in, the, in the Globe tells it all. Masculinity is toxic. Men don't have to be. I love it. I'm sure the men here tonight are men with non-toxic masculinity. I would like a nicer positive adjective, so you will find it. Um, Laissez-moi uh, terminer sur ce sujet avec notre inimitable biologiste, océanographe, humoriste, conteur, animateur québécois sénégalais, Boukar Diouf, dans la presse euh, il n'y a pas longtemps, en octobre. Je le cite. « Mon père, que je ne cite pas souvent, il le cite tout le temps, mon père, que je ne cite pas souvent, disait que le plus grand danger qui guette un homme pendouille entre ses jambes. Et il avait totalement raison. Ne pas comprendre ce principe fondamental, continue-t-il, c'est courir le risque d'une spectaculaire dégringolade, comme le subit présentement Éric Salvaille et Gilbert Roson. À force de vouloir semer à tout vent une graine non sollicitée, il récolte une tempête médiatique et une pendaison par le pénis bien mérité. Je termine. En 67, et euh, Cathy l'a dit tout à l'heure, le gouvernement de M. Pearson a voulu que nous fassions des recommandations, je cite, « afin d'assurer aux femmes des chances égales à celles des hommes ».« It was about equality of opportunity and equity ». Some observe that it's now switching, switching to equality of outcomes. Those concepts, metaphors like breaking through the glass ceiling, do not address the roots of many deeply rooted social problems such as sexual abuses and harassment. Behind each of these equality objectives, Man, capital M, stands at the norm. I'm not interested to becoming equal to men. I want the roots of patriarchy to be addressed. As the late French feminist philosopher Francoise Collin wrote, equality is a principle of assimilation, not a concept of social transformation. Thank you.